mbali duniani walikutana katika kongamano la Kiswahili katika chuo kikuu cha Howard jijini Washington DC na kongamano hii iliyoandaliwa na chama cha ukuzaji wa Kiswahili duniani cha Ukidu kwa ushirika na wadau mbalimbali wa Kiswahili hapa Marekani ilitamatika kwa hafla maalum ya usiku wa Mswahili siku ya Jumamosi hafla hii ya usiku wa Mswahili iliohusisha burudani toka mshairi wetu Mkenya Ana Molago mchekeshaji masanja mkandamizaji toka Tanzania na mwanamitindo wa, wa Kiswahili toka Houston B Asia Aidarus. Miongoni mwa wageni tajika waliohudhuria kongamano ni pamoja na Profesa Abdulatif Abdalla kutoka Ujerumani, mwasisi wa kwanza Maulana Karenga na kulikuwa na wanafunzi wa Kimarekani wanaosoma lugha ya Kiswahili na pia kulikuwa na wahadhiri toka vyuo vikuu vya Marekani, Tanzania pamoja na Kenya. Na bila kumsahau super producer wetu hapa hapa Kilibanjaro Studios uh, Mubelo Bandio ambaye pia alikuwemo kama mshirika na mwana jopo katika kongamano. Mubelo karibu sana ndani ya One Mike Show. Shukrani sana. Okay. Sasa hivi kwa uchache Mubelo labda tueleze kuhusu kongamano hii uliohudhuria na malengo yake na labda uongeze uh, na ni kina nani waliohudhuria na pia tufahamishe kuhusu chama cha ukuzaji wa Kiswahili duniani. Mubelo, kazi kwako. Mm, maswali mengi anza la kwanza. Eh? So la kwanza kongamano uliohudhuria yeah. yes. na malengo yake. Malengo ni kukuza Kiswahili. Kwa hiyo mm. ni chama cha ukuzaji wa Kiswahili duniani mm -hmm. cha Ukidu mm -hmm. na hili ni kongamano la saba. Kwa ni kongamano la saba la kimataifa la ukuzaji wa Kiswahili duniani. Uh -huh. La kwanza lilifanyika Howard mm -hmm. uh, mwaka 2015 na, na, okay. na nafikiri ndio nilipata nafasi ya kumoji mwinyi. Uh, uh, kipindi kile alikuwa anatimiza miaka 90. Oh, alikuwa, yes, alikuwa mgeni yeah. rasmi, nikapata yeah. fursa ya kumfanya mahojiano, alikuja akazungumza mengi kuhusu Kiswahili. Baada ya hapo nimekwenda Kenya, nafikiri mara mbili maybe likaenda Uganda, wakaenda Zanzibar, nafikiri wakarudi Tanzania, sasa amerudi hapa. Uh -huh. Lakini mwaka ni ilikuwa uh, twende na anasema twende kwa sababu ni sehemu ya kamati. Ilikuwa twende Poland kama uh -huh. isingekuwa huyu kiazi hapo Russia. Uh, na zaidi ya hapo <laughs> then ilikuwa yeah, na bado tunaanza kufikiria sasa kwenda Rwanda na nchi mm -hmm. nyingine. Kwa hiyo lengo ni kukuza Kiswahili duniani. Na kuna mazuri yamefanyika, kuna ambayo siwezi nikasema ni mabaya lakini kuna changamoto nyingi ambazo nafikiri kama wangelifanya mm -hmm. ni kongamano kubwa kuliko lilivyokuwa. Okay. Kwa hiyo nafikiri lina hadhi kubwa sana lakini hawakufanya kazi nzuri ya kulitangaza. Uh -huh. Lakini pia hawakufanya kazi nzuri ya kulipanga ili mhusishe mtu wa kawaida ndio maana lilionekana kama la kishule sana uh -huh. kuliko akina sisi e, kwa sababu mimi nasema wa Kenya wengi ambao kwamba nilikuwa nawaelezwa walikuwa hawajaisikia walikuwa hawajui Nikwede. na walikuwa wafahamu kama, kama kuna kongamano ambayo ina ambayo inaendelea kule Howard University uh -huh. uh, ADC lakini malengo yake hasa uh, ya hizi kongamano umesema tangu mwaka 2015 mpaka mwaka 2022 hmm. yani ni malengo gani wamekuwa nayo na ni mambo gani ambayo wame, wamefanikiwa ah sasa hapo ndako na naizungumzia chama nafikiri next time tabii ni muite rais au mkurugenzi aje azungumze mm -hmm. lakini kama nilivyosema wao wanajitahidi wana kukifanya Kiswahili kikue ki zaidi na naweza ngasema kwa bahati mbaya sana kinatanuka zaidi mashuleni mm -hmm. shule nyingi sana zinatumia Kiswahili sasa Howard University ndio chuo kikuu ambacho kinachukua ma wanafunzi wengi katika masomo ya lugha za Kiafrika African mm. Studies mm -hmm. na wanafunzi wengi kati ya wanaosoma masomo ya lugha za Kiafrika wanasoma Kiswahili. Kwa Kiswahili inaonekana kama flagship katika Howard lakini pia unaweza kuona kwamba ambavyo kimesambaa katika sehemu mbalimbali. Kwa hiyo wanakipush lakini kinakwenda zaidi kwenye taasisi, kwenye kwenye vyuo umoja wa mataifa na hivyo zimekwenda UNESCO, sio kuna mchango kiasi gani lakini unaona kwamba wako mle zaidi katika masuala ya kishule. Kwa hiyo hata hii kongamano ndio nafikiri pungufu kubwa nililoiona ni kwamba kuna wadhiri wengi sana kutoka Kenya uh -huh. kutoka Tanzania wa Uganda uh -huh. kwa bahati mbaya kuweza kuja Rwanda hawakuja uh -huh. lakini kulikuwa kuna mada 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 unafikiri una, unasikiliza PhD lakini yote kuna sisi na Kiswahili lakini unajua Mandela alisema kwamba ukizungumza na mtu kwa lugha anayoelewa uh -huh. anayosikia itamkaa kichwani ukizungumza mtu kwa lugha yake itamkaa moyoni kwa hiyo hawa wamezungumza kwa Kiswahili lakini nafikiri wana style ku, kulipanga kongamano lemosisha mtu wa kawaida kwa sababu kuna siku nilikuwa pale nafikiri mbali na watu ambao wanaweza kusema kwamba ni wale uh, waalimu wa mhm mm nafikiri nikawa ni kwa peke yangu wengine wote walikuwa ni aidha yuko pale kwa ajili ya kusanya habari 
au ni mafunzo ya Kiswahili au ni profesa wa Kiswahili au ni mdau mkubwa katika chuo katika masuala ya Kiswahili. Okay na kuna mikakati yoyote ambayo sasa kuelekea mbele sasa inayotekelezwa kuweza kuhusisha watu wa kawaida. Hiyo ni mkakati utakapo wiki mbili zijazo. Kwa hiyo two weeks from now tutakuwa na post mortem mm-hmm. ambao kila mtu na hiyo ilikuwa ni moja kati ya task ambayo tumepeana. Okay. Kila mtu aandike ili uone kongamano limefanikiwa unataka kuona nini. Lakini kwangu mimi feedback ni hiyo kwamba okay. kama tunataka kufanya mada tusifanye siku moja mm-hmm. alafu siku ya pili iwe ya mtu mswahili wa kawaida mm-hmm. wazungumzaji Kiswahili maeneo ya DC wako wanakaribia kufika mpaka 1400 kwa nini hawakuepo pale tungepata really? robo yeah. robo tu yeah. tungepata moja ya nane hao watu ina maana tumekuwa na watu 500 kweli hawakufika 500 yeah. sasa lazima ile ni swali nyingine ya kujiuliza ili kuweza kuwafikia tunawafikia vipi Okay. Aya na hapa nitawakaribisha you know like a panelist wangu wengine kama mna swali yoyote kuhusu kongamano hili kwa sababu watu wengi walikuwa hawajui kuhusu uh, mm. na, 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 na labda pia po baadaye kidogo kabla tutamatishe uh, segment hii ndio utatueleza labda ni wapi mtu anaweza kwenda ku uh, kupa, kupata hiyo mada kama hakuhudhuria mm-hmm. kama kuna mtandao wa YouTube ama sehemu yoyote ambapo mtu anaweza kwenda. Aya Omosh Fire uh, Ruth karibuni mimi sina swali lakini ndajaribu. Eh. Yeah. Uh, so swali yangu ni ni moja tu. Sasa mimi kama mtu wa kawaida. Hii organization ama tuseme hii chama nimesaidiaje? Ama mnaona mnaweza saidia watu kama sisi aje? Tusema wa Kenya, wa Uganda, watu wa, wale watu wanaongea Swahili. Mm. Hii chama itatusaidiaje? Okay kwanza na na na, na wacha niseme kwanza mimi siongei kama kiongozi wa chama kwa mimi sio kiongozi wa chama uh, na sio msemaji pia lakini ni mdau wa Kiswahili na nimekuwa kwa muda mrefu kwa hiyo kusema ni kwamba itakusaidiaje kwanza kuna makongamano mengi kuna machapisho mengi kuna nafasi nyingi kwa hiyo kuna nafasi za shule kwa wale ambao wanafundisha lakini umezungumzia kuhusu mtu wa kawaida na kuna vitu vingi vya kujifunza kuhusu hiyo kwa hiyo wanachama nafikiri wanachama ni kama dola 30 kwa mwaka Okay. Naona. Kwa kuingia chaukidu.org, I mean .org, yes, kama siko say. Lakini ukitafuta chaukidu chama cha wazaji wa Kiswahili duniani, utapata mambo mengi yanafanyika kuhusu swala la Kiswahili. Lakini bado swali narudi ambalo wamezungumza na tumesema tangu awali kwamba tunajaribu binafsi nataka nitambue. Nataka niwe sehemu ya kuzungumzia. Ukiangalia kamati ya maandalizi bosi, tulikuwa tumekaa pale. Sijui Ali Badawi PhD mkurugenzi sijui ni PhD mkurugenzi unajua kwa hiyo kuna kwa kuna, masu, uh, kuna kuna watu wengi ambao wana, wanaitazama katika mrengo wa masomo zaidi academy mm, yes lakini mimi nataka itazamwe katika mfumo wa lugha ya mawasiliano fursa na ajira na vitu kama hivyo kwa hiyo hiyo sasa ndio tanga kuangalia nafikiri kuelekea 2023 mm-hmm. ndio tutakuwa mkakati sasa kuangalia inatoka vipi kwenye akademia irudi huko kwa mtao na <coughs> kuna vile sasa tuseme watoto watoto wetu sisi mm. ambao tuko hapa tunakaa hapa tuko diaspora mm. ni watoto wanaonekea wa, hapa eh, wa, mm. so tunaweza wasaidiaje ama kuna kuna fursa ya kuwafundisha lugha ama hizo ni baadhi ya zile vitu bado mnapanga ama ni aje so nitasema wewe unazungumzi tu kwa, kwa experience yangu mwenyewe hakuna hakuna watoto wachache sana watajifunza lugha uh, kupitia tu shule unajua kama narudi nyumbani amuiongei Mm. Mm. Ni kama ni kama sasa hivi mimi kujifunza Chinese. At least la, lakini unajua ikiwa kuna kuna mali wanaweza enda mm-hmm. tunaweza wasaidia. Unajua hiyo mm-hmm. sasa ndio waga changamoto ya nini uh, ya watu mm-hmm. ambayo na watoto wao. Mm-hmm. Ni pali ambayo wanaweza zungumza sana ama wanaweza fundishwa mm-hmm. mangeli you know vitu yes. kama hizo yes. insha una hiyo insha si kitu ambayo una, unafundisha yeah. mtoto you, yeah. you know sasa, what I'm saying kuna niseme kitu kimoja sijui sijui cha ukili wanataka kufanya nini kuhusu okay. hili lakini binafsi nime mm-hmm. nafahamu kuna shule nyingi kuna yes. shule online yes za online ambazo zinafanya na wanagraduate kila mara ambazo wanafundisha hapa nyingine ziko maeneo hapa hapa DMV ambazo mm-hmm. zinafundisha Kiswahili nao ni karibu kila siku kuna wengine wanafikiri wako Dallas Uh, na wanafanya kazi nzuri ya kufundisha Kiswahili um, sina uhakika na wengine labda sasa hilo ni swali nyingine ambayo nitatakia ni, niangalie kwamba kama chama cha ukuzaji wa Kiswahili mm-hmm. wao wanaweza wakawa na labda poto ambayo mtu kiingia unaweza ukasearch kutoka uliko ikakupa access ya kwa sababu sidhani kama watakuwa na muda wao wa kufundisha Kiswahili sawa ila wanaweza wakakusanya walimu wote wa Kiswahili wao wakawa kama mo kwamba ukiingia kwenye website yao unaweza kuandika tu Montgomery County 
wakasema okay wanafikia okay, account yes uh-huh. hapa unaweza kujifunzia maana shule gani iko karibu nafikiri hicho ndio kitu anachoweza kufanya lakini kama wao kuendesha shule haiwezekani wale wako kule kwenye kwenye vyo vikuna ndio ambao wanaendesha zaidi lakini changamoto kubwa pia kuongezea tu bwana ndio amesema changamoto kubwa ambayo naona hata nikiongea na wazazi wengi ambao wanataka watoto wao wajue lugha ya Kiswahili ni kwamba hawazungumzi lugha ya Kiswahili nyumbani na hawasemeshi na hata wale ambao wanazungumza lugha ya Kiswahili hawasemeshi watoto wao kwa lugha ya Kiswahili. Ndiyo. Yeah. Ndiyo. Njia ya rahisi zaidi kumfunza mtoto Kiswahili. Sio kila mtu anaongea kama Brian. Eh, ni pale mwanzo. Pale mwanzo. Eh, na hata tuna mtoto hapa ndani ya studio size sijui ni sijui ni mwite mtoto. Sijui kama mtoto lakini sawa. Sijui sijui ni mwite mtoto ama sijui ni mwite mwanamwali ama sijui ni mwite dada mdogo. ama dada mdogo. lakini changamoto kubwa ni kuwa wazazi wengi hawasemeshi watoto wao lugha ya Kiswahili. Pale ambapo mtoto ana pale ambapo mtoto anakuuliza swali kwa Kiingereza, unamjibu kwa Kiingereza na pale ambapo hata unajaribu kumsemesha Kiswahili na anakujibu kwa Kiingereza, unainua mikono unaendelea na mazungumzo kwa Kiingereza. Ruth unasemaje? Ah Ruth. Mtaniwia radhi. Okay, mshauri radhi. Asante. So, mm-hmm. let me speak <laughs> language I can better express myself. <laughs> anyway, so this is the problem, right? Um ninaloa tukiongea Kiswahili hapa. Mm-hmm. Lakini sababu kazini na nyumbani wasonge Kiswahili. Mm-hmm. It's really hard yes. to retain it. Actually, nowadays when they ask me what's your fluency in Swa, literally they they ni, ni, me, ni me drop my fluency uh in speaking. Um I can still understand it. Uh, I can write because it takes me time to kind of think through it. But speaking, I mean, this is a good example. It, it's I need to think in Swahili so I can express myself better. But I don't do that. So mm. when we're talking to parents, saying parents need to speak Swa so that they can be able to transfer the knowledge. But they are also they also have this um, challenge. Cha- <laughs> this challenge that they don't use Swa in their day to day lives. You know, sika manyumbani where you literally are forced you listen to it all the time because they're speaking it around you somebody will speak so like it it's it, it, it's you're always training yeah but we've lost that we've lost that continual training we well i'm talking i'm speaking people okay. like, <laughs> people mm. like I, I, like clearly i did not talk about okay. <laughs> ali mm. <laughs> we are we watch away, right? <laughs> i'm just speaking for me and people like me yeah and and i'll tell you ruth it's it's not an easy thing mm-hmm. um you know and especially now coming from the Kenyan side mm-hmm. i understand it's not an easy thing but it's a deliberate choice it that people it make. actually it actually really is because i've seen it work yes. for non native swahili speakers yes because ali is a native swahili speaker that's at least that's, I that's what i categorize him yeah, right? he is a native so speaker. everybody around him mm-hmm. when i go around him and his people they all speak it's, swahili it's swahili you yeah. yeah. own a choice pia wewe unajipa unajipanga na unaingia right hiyo uh, kidogo 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 nakata ali nimekutumia video yes ya mtoto niliye mwa interview mm-hmm. ana miaka 17 yule mtoto wa kizungu yule mtoto wa kizungu eh mm-hmm. bado yuko shule ya sekondari yuko sekondari eh mm-hmm. hana mtu anazungumza Kiswahili kwake okay alitumia dio lungo akajifunza lugha kumi baada ya kachagua moja ikawa ni Kiswahili yeah sawa akafanya trip lakini swali ni kwamba utakupa mfano kuna madarasa mengi ya Kiswahili kutoka Kenya yako online mimi najifunza yes. masuala ya ngeli na nini online kila siku mm-hmm. sawa eh mm-hmm. kuna tv zinatangaza kila siku mm-hmm. Alafu sio lazima uangalie kila kitu. Mm-hmm. Basi angalau kila siku jipe muda nitaangalia taarifa ya habari. Yes. Citizen yes. whatever. Mm-hmm. Ziko, yeah. Ukiamua ipo na nasizungumzi ya kutoka Zanzibar kutoka nazungumzia kutoka Toka Kenya. Kenya. Naangalia TV yes. za Kenya kila <laughs> yes. siku. Yes. Na naangalia okay. programu za Kiswahili peke yake. Hii mm-hmm. sio miaka ile ya Moshi imekuja huko hata magari yatumii mafuta. <laughs> Nazungumzia hii miaka ambayo sasa hivi unaweza really kwa connected. Actually mbali hiyo. Mimi kila nikiwa naamka 3 am mm-hmm. Mimi mm-hmm. wana drive kwenda kule na kwa msikiliza masawa Japan. Mhm. Mhm. Jambo radio. Jambo radio. Jambo radio. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Na usikilize. Kwa hiyo ukiingia online kwenye Radio Garden, radio za Kiswahili za Kenya. Mhm. Kibao. Ukiingia YouTube, madarasa yako mengi yale ya free. Na Actually lafu. mbali hiyo. Lakini sasa angalia kitu kingine ni kwamba unaweza ukaweka commitment. Mimi watoto wangu hawana shida. Mimi mwalimu wao aliniuliza, "Eti wameniambia kwamba unazungumza lugha nyingine ni kweli?" Nikamwambia, "Ni kweli." kwa sababu mwalimu alikuwa haamini kwamba kuna lugha nyingine unafahamu zaidi ya Kiingereza ila wakifunga tu mlango wangu pale ndani pap 
ni Kiswahili. Wakiingia kwa kina Ali as long as unajua tumeingia sema ambao wanazungumza Kiswahili, wanazungumza Kiswahili. Eh wana just yes. Kwa hiyo hiyo ndio ambayo tumeweza kufanya na ndio maana tumeweza ku retain walipotu kutoka nyumbani mpaka sasa. Kina borongwa borongwa kidogo lakini bado tumutumu mlembe. Kwa lazima uweke dhamira. Nia ndio kitu cha kwanza. Lakini kama yule mtoto hana mtu anazungumza Kiswahili kwenye familia yake, hana jirani anazungumza Kiswahili, amejifunza kupitia Duolingo baada ya kapiga trip akaenda Tavetas, juu akaenda Kenya, akafanya amerudi na amekuja mpaka amefanya presentation kwa nchi ukidu. Yeah, na, 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 na alikuwa pili hafla Jumamosi yes, nilimuona. Yes. Eh. Sasa ndo unaona Ruth, I'm telling And, you. Uh, so I understand there has yeah. to be intention. Yeah. You have to be very intentional to keep it. Like uh, to keep up breast of soil and speaking so hili. Quite okay. I, I hear you. So I really I wanted to ask about that the kid you guys are talking about. How does he practice every day? Who does he speak to? Or oh, that does not matter. It does. It, it, it does that matter. is where I want to know how do you retain that part. How now, just like Bandio said, mm -hmm. content and maybe we seem to kusikiza taarifa za habari. Kuna mpaka uh, podcast. Sikiza, na nani. Kuna kuna mpaka podcast kusikiza ndo kwanza. Unaona easy skill status, listening, reading, speaking. Uh, what are the four skills? Speaking, eh, writing. writing. Writing, reading, speaking and listening. Mm -hmm. They are all related to each other. You become better in the other three when you do any of the one. You become uh -huh. a better speaker uh -huh. by listening. By listening. Yeah. So. You become you also become a better speaker by, by reading and writing. You know yeah. because you pick up okay. things that maybe you did not know about. So so whichever you have of the four. Pick one. Pick whichever okay. whichever you have available for you. Okay. Listening to me is the easiest one because you can do this every day. You don't need a second person. You can do it everywhere so it's it's the laziest, it's the easiest. Um it's 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 one of those that will will take you will start taking you places even without knowing that you're going places and here's a good thing about content from kenya mm -hmm. there's a podcast by uh mkamburi chigogo and uh and uh hijabi villain called swahili dishes ni podcast ya udaku kwa hivyo kama watu wapendi tarifa za habari kuna podcast ya udaku ya kiswahili you know ambao unaweza kusikiza na uka ukaweza kupata mazoezi ya kitu kimoja na na hii ni katika chochote kwenye maisha. Ukitaka kuwa ukitaka kuwa vizuri katika jambo moja, fanya mara mbili ya upokezi ile jambo. Ili uwe mwongeaji mzuri, sikiliza mara mbili unavyoongea. Ili uwe mwandishi mzuri, soma mara mbili unavyoandika. And vice versa is true. Kama unataka kuwa msikilizaji mzuri, then ongea zaidi mara mbili. Hiyo inakupa uwezo wa kufanya hivi. Na mimi nitawaambia na watu hawajui, kuna mtu mwingine anasema kwamba wanaipanga. Mimi ninasikiliza redio kuliko mtu mwingine yoyote. Tanzania ah, guarantee na ni kwa sababu nataka kutangaza kuhusu Tanzania lazima mimi nasikiliza niko kwenye gari nasikiliza mimi mpaka naweza nikawa naoga nasikiliza na sisikilizi kwa sababu nataka najua anachokifanya mm -hmm. nasikiliza kwa sababu najiweka kwenye position ya yule mtu najiuliza ningekuwa na maswali haya ningekuwa na idea hii ningekuwa na taarifa hizi zote ninge present namna gani mm -hmm. same thing hata ninapokuwa kazini mimi analeta kifao nasema ndege fulani nataka kutengeneza hiki na hiki na hiki na hiki. Kama kuna mtu mkali sana amletea hapa akiwa anatengeneza swali ni kwamba kama ningekuwa na hizo zote components na kila kitu ningeenda this way au ningeenda the other way. Na hiyo itanipa njia mbili. I was right au nilikuwa siko sawa nitamuuliza then utajifunza. Lakini usisikilize kwa sababu unaendesha na unamsikiliza tu masawa Japan amefanya hivi. Hiyo dada ni kati ya watu ambao wako so talented katika free strike broadcasting sijaona Afrika Mashariki. Lakini ukijisikiliza pale jiulize je ningekuwa na script kama ya kwake na mara nyingi haonekani kuwa na script ningekuwa na na mhoji huyu mtu ningemu approach this way au the other way kama unataka kufanya podcast yako sikiliza unaofanya podcast twice as much na wewe ujiulize kwa mm -hmm. kama unataka kufanya sports sikiliza watu tofauti alafu na sikiliza watu wanaofanya vizuri sana ili nijue nini cha kufanya na sikiliza na sikiliza vibaya sana ili nijue nini cha kutokufanya okay. once you do that you should be good lakini ukisikiliza kwa intention ya kupata taarifa tu how to gain chochote lazima ujiweke kwenye nafasi ya kwamba kama ningetakiwa kusimulia history kama Ali ningejisimulia vipi hiyo lazima itakwambia ningekuwa mahapa tayari umeshajua tatizo tayari umeshawe solve okay I, 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 can i say something i learned today yeah sure is not only having intention but exactly what to do because yeah. i think uh, you guys talking about like use one of those four skills mm -hmm. do that consistently because i did not know how to do it it's like mm -hmm. okay nina nikiongea na tunaelewa lakini ku, ku, kuongea Kiswahili imekuwa ngumu as of like for the last couple of years right so uh, i think the thing i would do going forward is i'll start by listening cuz that's the easiest i can get to mm -hmm. um and then you know build up from there na mimi nitakwambia nitakupa mfano wewe wewe siko kwenye radio 
nyingi eh, kuna maoni halisi sio kasao um, nyingi ya lugha kwa mfano vipindi vingi ambavyo mimi nasikia nikivifanya nina script it'll be as easy as wewe kuniambia kusikiliza siku moja wakasema eh naomba script ya kipindi fulani alafu uone kama wewe ukiona nisikiliza huko umeishika unaisoma itakwenda sawa mm. kwa sababu watu wengi hata hawajui kwamba mimi hata intro za kipindi nimeziandika karibu na sandi kwa kujiunga nami mimi ni mbelo bandio kutoka kwa Kilimanjaro studio lakini flow yangu haionekani kama ninasoma kwa sababu nimefanyia kazi nikikupa ile script utaisoma kama mimi hapana then hapo ndo pa kuanzia okay. kwa hiyo ina maana utaangalia midondoko yako mm-hmm. utaangalia usomaji wako utaangalia poses zako kwa sababu sentence ni ndefu sana nisimame ni wapi ili nisiishiwe pumzi wapi ili ilete maana mm-hmm. so hicho ndio kitu cha kwanza ambacho natakiwa kukifanya mimi nilipokuwa nikisikiliza sana nilikuwa natumia sana NPR kwa sababu nilipokuwa naangalia zile taarifa tulipokuwa tukifanya shule mnatakiwa mfanye vipindi kama vya NPR hivi mika yupo wamelala lakini unachotakiwa kwamba nilichofanya ni kwamba unakwenda uzuri wa NPR ni kwamba karibu kila story iko transcribed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kwa hiyo ina maana yeah. ukifika pale unachoweza kufanya ni kwamba unaweza kaingia moja kwa moja ukachukua ile script uka play alafu ukaanza kuisoma. Na utagundua thamani kuna kisa sana kina Michelle Martin ambaye unasikiliza flow yake. Mm-hmm. Ana, ana podcast yake can I just tell you. Ukimsikiliza huwezi kuamini kama anasoma. Lakini nenda tutafuta Michelle Martin can I mm-hmm. just tell you. Alafu play pale chini kuna kuna script. Kuna script. Yeah. Jaribu kuna nayo uone that's the call ndio maana kwamba ukitaka kutangaza mara mbili wasikilize watangazaji ukitaka kutangaza sikiliza watangazaji twice as much kuna maoni huko asante ni sana okay all right uh, yes uh, and and uh, today. yes yes uh, citizen the seven o'clock news okay. very very yeah, uh, and another uh, and another good program to also be listening to is dira dunia bbc it's a one hour show oh, okay. uh, on bbc I swahili i listen to that one in kenya though okay good yeah. so if you listen to that at least every day you know even at least four times a week okay. i promise you you know like over time mm-hmm. you'll start challenging yourself mentally and and i think also another mistake that i see uh, amongst amongst kenyans and maybe amongst tanzanians too but but mostly i see it with kenyans mm-hmm whenever younger people who are learning the language are trying to speak especially kids who've grown up here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they start you know like yeah. laughing at them yes. and uh and that is a very very fatal mistake yeah. that you can make because this kid at some point will decide you know what i can't I'm, i can't yeah. i'm not doing this anymore every time i try to speak I this is what's happening right. my accent is wrong yeah, or, yeah. yeah. And, and, and people are correcting yeah. you yes and, and and then you know uh, not especially even correcting it's the it's the look that like why are you even trying yes uh, and yeah. you know especially if you see if you see a kid trying you know you don't even necessarily have to correct them right there and then on the spot yeah. if the conversation is flowing yeah, just let, let it flow them, yeah. and then baadaye kidogo ndo unaweza kumwambia unajua kitu fulani ulisema hivi unaweza kusema hivi na hivi na hivi Pablo Mesikia kwa dalikuwa na alikuwa na correct you wote yeah so na Pablo Pablo so yes yes na Pablo ngelia ngelia TV yes you know it's good Pablo is correcting us but Pablo i challenge you Njo hapa tuzungumze Kiswahili. Ukipata nafasi, oh. njo hapa piga simu, tupige story kwa Kiswahili ndo tupate kusikia Kiswahili yako sadifu. Anasema kumbe one Michael jua leo kuna Kiswahili ndio maana ameto. Okay, alafu hapa anasema asi. Alafu hapa Akinya Doyo anasema maybe African languages taking on the form of uh language development that's foreign is the problem our communities do languages differently when we focus on syntax and semantics we lose interest and the essence of language is lost it's led beyond logic which is good because mababu zetu yeah. hawakujua ngeli yeah. hawakujua uh, viambatanishi lakini walikuwa naongea lugha iliyo safi yep. yeah so i think especially the the spoken part uh there's an an, an and i guess also it comes with a it comes with a territory of different dialects that kiswahili has mm-hmm. so a lot of people but, even when people talk about it, kiswahili sanifu mm-hmm. kiswahili sanifu is a standardized dialect oh. remember kiswahili was uh, was spoken by a lot of different groups kuna kimvita kuna kiamu kuna kimakunduchi kuna kimrima there are so many different dialects that's why there's certain things and that's why even uh, a, a lot of day. that's why a lot of students uh, <laughs> in Mombasa mm-hmm. are failed and people are saying students are failing in Mombasa but they're not failing they're just they're using they're a different way. dialect yes. that the examiner yeah. 
does not, not understand know. yes and then they decide that it's not part of the that this is scheme. this is not the marking scheme yeah so so that's part of also what uh is being integrated now accommodation mm. of the different dialects you know like if you go to lamu for example uh and and, and hear how they speak and hear how uh, yeah wagunya mtu anakuambia ndo hapa badala ya njo and it's still correct anakuambia ziatu badala viatu and it's still mm-hmm. correct but uh tell we, pablo tell pablo yeah, yeah. But, 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 but that's that's something that i think you know like with uh chaukidu you know like once it gets to the regular people what to go ground mm-hmm. i think we're gonna be able to address this want to remind the listeners that you're tuned into the politics hour of the one mic show we are in studio with mubelo bandio talking about the result well, of the Bible Bible conference at howard university Mika. Mika ingia utangia. Mika karibu. No, me 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 am it's quite simple. Like um the reason why there's a failure, failure to make change. And uh personally like me, like in America I used to speak fluently with that coastal accent because they look like they coast for quite a while then. Nika kuja huku and slowly by slowly you realize you're interacting with people uh kuonge kiswahili ni kitu na frown like not really frowned on a phone but most people would want to just continue communicating in english for the mere fact that like, they want to assimilate over here now for those who are learning it now becomes sort of like a chore kwa sababu even how you express yourself you try to jaribu ku mix sounds like like zungu Uh, slowly you leave your spoken your your speaking ability of how it's done just look at it this way why is it ni kiswahili ndo tume lose ability ya kuongea vizuri but we can still speak our mother tongues easily right because akuni le pressure uh the only time i know i'm going to use mother tongue is somewhere that i'm safe niko niko home ama niko within people who i'm familiar with and not all of my friends are going to be speaking the same mother tongue with me so how for god now and then depending on the different dialects of swahili that we have you find it easy to communicate to the english so it all boils down to that you being comfortable being back again to this is you this is who you are you don't mind if it influences how your english sounds like but if you take that pride of how you want to speak your swahili it's going to be easy for you to maintain uh kwenda la kuongea na pita kwa the rest of the how do i say uh, the younger generation that is looking up to you and is planning up to you if a kid comes to speak to you in swahili okay asante sana mimi yeah your kid comes to speak to you in swahili but then you yourself are not even confident speaking to them you think they're going to pick it up na na hapa luis muya ameongeza kitu kizuri sema sana anasema mficha uchi hazai don't, don't be scared of speaking okay. however deficient you feel just speak it you will eventually get better you know so hata kama nyinyi wale wanasema si uendaga au si ukujaga mm-hmm. ni sawa ni sawa kuna tatizo kwa sababu kumbuke hata hii kiingereza tukizungumza hatu hatuizungumzi kwa ufasaha kuanzia mwanzo mpaka mwisho na, na kuna kitu kimoja nijifunza kwenye kongamano yeah. uh, nitakuja kutafuta tafsiri kuna lugha sanifu mm-hmm. na lugha fasaha na vitu viwili tofauti vitu viwili tofauti kabisa so, 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 yeah mhm yeah hiyo yeah. ni hiyo ni topic ya school you, you, you need a no. nini a full scale fasaha ni nini i can give you a full scale yeah. no fasaha ni nini it's it's i'll buy you karatasi brand <laughs> no 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 hapana lugha lugha sanifu ile 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 ambayo ndasema wa Kenya wanapenda kusema Kiswahili sanifu mm-hmm. ni ni lahaja ambayo ndio ilitumika na in fact it was standardized by the germans it was a standard dialect mm-hmm. it was used to standardize kiswahili and mostly ni kiunguja hiyo dialect ambayo ilitumika ni kiunguja cause kiunguja ukumbuke wa unguja pia wana wana, wana lahaja yao unguja ni zanzibar okay. zanzibar kuna kuna sehemu mbili kuna unguja na kuna pemba mm-hmm. so kuna yeah. no ni kwa court okay. yeah. <laughs> so so hapo kuna kuna kiunguja okay. you know like the kiunguja dialect is what was used to standardize okay. it did not accommodate you know like all these other dialects that we have okay. and fasaha is more like directly translated is just fluency you know oh. uh, it's a clean fluency okay. yeah. so shaban robert alingia hapo aje 
Shaban Robert alikuwa ni mwandishi na mshairi sasa kuelewi. No so ndio nasema sasa zile lugha alikuwa anaandika unajua wengine wetu tulu ile kitabu yake baze. Utubora mkulima. Ah si hiyo. Eh. Si hiyo unajua No you see aiko hiyo kitabu. Ile kitabu yake Shaban Robert ilikuwa gani? Oh by the way uh Shaban Robert tulia. I want to say something else Ali. You know the thing is uh ile in the intent of the ability of wanting to learn i can tell you i've known a guy in clubhouse uh last year couldn't even speak one swahili word sai ana piga gastro in swahili yes it's broken like ah alikuja akasema unajua hiki tu hiki but you will understand it and he he, he, he he communicates clearly like that willingness and ability just to right learn. That yeah. communicating with people one by one saying something and I know Lisa come understand hiyo watu wana pia watu kwa na patience ya kumsikia then akisha sema mtu anambia oh ulikuwa na maanisha hivi ati eh yeah, oh okay sawa okay, so, you know yeah. then you know he corrects a check with him so you also have to have that will, will power to want to learn it and you learn it. yeah you know and and to add on to what Mika said the willingness to want to learn is the equivalent of the willingness to fight in a war. Sadikika. The yes. willingness to fight in yes. a war will make you win more than yeah, the weapons sadikika. that you have. So if you have all the teachers and you have all the books and all the CDs and everything but you don't have that willingness utakanazo there are people who've lived in in Kenya, there are people who've lived in Tanzania na wamekataa. Yeah. Mm. Wamekataa kuongea Kiswahili. Yeah. Wako wengi sana. A you know ton, a lot yeah. then so, in fact this new generation mm-hmm. you speak to them in swahili and they reply in english i know it's, it's like they do some even in, in mother tongue swahili does it, there's some ah, in in let's be careful let's be careful when you say the new generation when i say new generation yeah. ali si semi skiza ni kisema new generation na sema sasa hawa watoto wanalewa squeeze kenya yeah i'm not talking about here in the us let me say something controversial real quick go ahead. Ahead. topic oh, go ahead. Uh, and and some people are going to hate me for saying this ngoja kwanza ngoja kwanza kwenye camera ili akuone vizuri yes some yeah. people some people are going to okay yeah some <laughs> people are going to hate me for saying this uh-huh. i have noted something in kenya uh-huh. and uh, a lot of people who were, were not necessarily raised in nairobi and you know in kenya there was that thing of uh, you can't speak <laughs> english or you're speaking english in a certain way uh-huh. this i think traumatized a lot of people especially those who came to nairobi it traumatized them because nairobians you know like i'm here speaking now as a nairobian we were very ruthless when it came to that so this traumatized some people and now they want their kids to start speaking english are you blaming them i'm not i'm not blaming okay. them just i'm not blaming them just, but i'm just saying it's, it's just an observation what, yeah. it's just what has become mm-hmm. i'm just saying it's an observation that i made where they felt like they were not brought up speaking english so they were speaking english in a certain way with certain accents so now when they're bringing up their kids they don't even want them to speak even Kishwali. anything else they want yeah. to take them straight to english yeah, right, to Charlie. take away it's you sad. know like that trauma which is very sad and i think uh it's something that uh they need to stop because when you raise your kids in nairobi for example whether you speak to them in mother tongue or whether you speak them to whatever language you speak to them at home the dialect they will grow up with in english will be determined by their peers and not by the first language that you teach them that's the reason why those of us who uh started speaking who are not spoken to in english at home mm-hmm. we started learning english in school the english of those who started speaking at home is not necessarily any better than ours and i think that's something that people especially who went through that trauma mm-hmm. of being told that una shrub mm-hmm. ama una nini they just need to get that off and not make their children not speak other languages it's, because of that it's easier said than done but, then, but then, Ali, 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 there's also this thing of there's also this thing whereby we, and if you go right now you'll see it among the parents in our generation in that we are a generation in ourselves whereby most of us don't even understand our mother tongue right when we have to understanding you start understanding you to communicate you need when we are older now it comes to our kids we are a generation whereby we are teaching our kids even speaking swahili is is associated to poverty it's associated to being poor it's not associated to success like mm-hmm. you want people up pushing to take the kids to to force them to communicate in english you walk around the estates you find kids playing in english like 
why did that ball go over there? So he go over there. Like, you run around. You, it, I was so shocked. Like, I hear kids playing, but they're speaking in an English. And then all kids in Nairobi sound the same, regardless of the That's history. That's true. Yeah. That yeah. True. Can it's I like there's this one hybrid, there's this one hybrid English that they're putting into it. And you start wondering to yourself, like, where are we going to? We are saying we have a national language, which is never spoken, or is never even is never even used. And I agree with that's why that's why it comes to when you see leaders like Malema saying it's high time whereby we should insist on most of the staff or most of the communication or most of business being handled should be handled in our national language so we can speak it because we stand at a risk of losing our language. Other people are embracing Swahili around the world, but us one of the main countries that is the largest speakers of Swahili, our younger generation are speaking. Okay, I uh, Ruth, what are, and we we now need to wrap up this okay. segment. Uh, yeah. Akinyi says the trauma boom, the trauma, the body keeps score, right? And I and I think uh she says willpower is over when it comes to the history of our languages. It's easier to tell people stop being under that trauma. Well, like they've had to carry that trauma so long because they were made fun of, probably they lost jobs, they lost opportunities because of it, right? And then you're telling this person stop doing that for your child where they're tr- literally trying to protect their kids from the experience they had so i think there has to be a revolution in terms of like even the people who perpetrated this this atrocity i'm gonna call it that they need to stop doing that to begin with we, we need to stop discriminating against people by how they speak and i, I know I, and, I, I and, and i normally tell kenyans when you meet the french the italians listen to their english does it really is it as fluent Kofi as we, as we Nidali demand Nidali. of ourselves mm-hmm. you know they do not yeah, you know you can have to look at the cipher what they're trying to tell you yeah you know and we need to be i don't say like them but we need to borrow a leaf from them yeah like in while i'm a zoom zeki to come out of nairobi my shen delivery fika zamani matajiri wali kuna magari watu wato wali kuna tumia farasi squeezy watu wato na farasi matajiri ndio ndio magari 